Hi everyone, it's my privilege to be bringing the Word of God to you today, and it's a special day. It's the church's birthday. All across the world today, the church is celebrating the moment that God poured out His Spirit on the believers in the upper room, empowering to take the gospel into the whole world. You know, to the Jews today is uh, actually a harvest festival. They call it Shavuot. And it's 50 days after Passover. But to us, the church, it's our birthday. The day God poured out His Spirit upon His church. Let's read about it in Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Jesus was speaking to a small band of His followers and He commanded them, Do not leave Jerusalem until you receive the promise that my Father gave you. As I told you before, in just a few days, you'll be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the utmost parts of the world. And then we turn to Acts chapter 2 and we read on the day of Pentecost, All the believers were meeting together in one place and suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty wind and it filled the house where they were sitting. And then what looked like flames of fire appeared and settled on each of them and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. This was an amazing moment for the followers of Christ because up to this point, the Holy Spirit had been with them, but now He was in them. And this wasn't to be seen as just a momentary event that we look back on church history and say, wasn't that nice? No, this is to be understood as an ongoing experience for all believers Today. Now, sadly, there are those that very seldom acknowledge the spirit filled beginnings of the church. But nonetheless, God began the church in Holy Spirit fullness, and He's always intended it to keep going in Holy Spirit fullness. And to those who are skeptical about the fact that such an experience is still available today, I can only offer my personal testimony. It's so real to me even now standing here talking to you. The day that I open my hands, it's so hungry for more of God, so hungry for the more of the reality of God in my life. And I said, come Holy Spirit, fill my life today. And then suddenly what it felt like was liquid energy flowing up and down through my body. And then came this moment of overflow when I began to speak in other tongues. And in that moment, Christianity became more than just a belief to me. It became an experience of the living God. Now, we're not saying that the baptism of the Holy Spirit makes you any more loved, accepted or forgiven by God. That's not what we're on about. We're saying this is the helper that has now taken up residence in your life. Who doesn't want and need help from God? Open yourself to the help of the Holy Spirit uh, today. And that's what, as I've been preparing this message, that's been the prayer in my heart, that as I'm speaking and you're listening, that you're slowly opening up yourself to a deeper encounter with the Spirit of God today. Yes, He is freely given to everyone, but our part is to intentionally receive Him. As we honour Him and recognise His presence and draw upon it, He begins to flow up out of us and becomes the living presence of God in our lives day to day. Now, my guess is that many of you listening, um, you know about God the Father, Jesus Christ. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, maybe you're a little bit vague. And we want you to know that, hey, He's not some impersonal force that inhabits the universe. He is a person 
who thinks and feels and comforts and strengthens and guides our lives. He is the active power of God in the world right now. And getting to know the Holy Spirit is a bit like trying to look at your own eye, which is a bit crazy. You think, wow, well, we're not really conscious of our eyes and yet they are with us, helping us all the time. We don't look at our eyes, we look through our eyes. And as we're looking through our eyes, they help us engage with the realities that are around us all the time. And that's just like the Holy Spirit. He's like our eyes. We don't, he doesn't want us to look at him. He wants us to look through him to see more of Jesus Christ. He wants to look, us to look through him to encounter the truth that he's guiding us uh, into. And so he's like our eyes in that respect. He doesn't want to draw attention to himself. He just wants to move and equip and empower our lives so that we can uh, flow with God in this world. God's answer to this weary world right now is to actually pour out His Spirit. Why is that God's answer to this weary world? Well, the Holy Spirit is the oil that softens our heart. He's the fire that purifies our lives. He's the wind that empowers us and propels us along. We live in a world that is self-conscious, that is failure conscious, that is problem conscious. We want to be God in us conscious on this Pentecost Sunday. As I said, He's freely given, but we must intentionally receive Him. Yes, He's freely given, but we need to recognize, honor, and draw upon His living presence within us. So my message to you today has one simple goal, and that is that you lift your awareness to the person and work of the Holy Spirit in your life. It mightn't be a lack of the presence of God that's the problem that you're struggling with right now. It's a lack of your awareness of the presence of God. And as we look back over history, it's this lack of awareness of things that have always been a limitation to us. Let me illustrate what I mean. You know, just 130 years ago, we were lighting our homes with candles. And then we discovered that when we rotate copper coils in magnetic fields, wow, it produces this energy that we call electricity. And look at what a benefit that's been uh, to our lives. It was there all along. We just didn't know that how to access it. We didn't create it. We discovered what was already there. A hundred years ago, we thought it was impossible to be flying through the air, but now an A380 jumbo jet can fly nonstop across the Pacific Ocean with 840 passengers. And that is also with lady luggage on board. See, many of you weren't impressed until I added that aspect of it. Now you're impressed. Well, lady luggage as well. That's amazing. <laughs> what? The law of aerodynamics was there all along. We just didn't access it. So it brought no benefit to our life. And what about uranium nuclear energy? Who would have thought that I... Uh, a lump of uranium the size of a tennis ball can yield the same amount of energy as three million liters of petrol. You're, you're saying, well, what's your point, David? I'm saying all these things were right there, but we didn't get any benefit from them because we weren't aware of them, which begs the question, what else is available to you right now that if you knew about it, it would make an enormous difference to your life. Well, on this Pentecost Sunday, I'm telling you, that's something that makes an enormous difference to your life, is the Spirit of God rising up in you, empowering your life, guiding you into all truth. Wow, what a difference, the Spirit of God, or rather I should say the awareness, drawing on the awareness of the Spirit of God within you can make in your life. Jesus said, I will ask the Father 
and He will give you another helper to be with you forever. He dwells with you and shall be in you. He shall be in you, Jesus said. And I I want you to notice how Jesus describes the Holy Spirit. He uses this beautiful term, the helper. When the helper comes, we're going to read that in just a moment. Uh, I'm going to pray and the Father is going to give you another helper. And so maybe it's not that you're struggling to get help from God, not that it's available to you now. It's that you lack an awareness of the help that's available uh, to you right now. There's a, a classic story in the Bible of somebody who was right there in the presence of God, was so much available to them, but they didn't access it through their lack of awareness. It's the story of Jacob uh, in Genesis uh, 28. Jacob was um, asleep and he had this dream and there's angels ascending and descending uh, into heaven and he woke up from his sleep and listen to what he said. He said, surely the Lord is in this place, but I was unaware of it. Jacob was asleep under the open heaven without realizing it. So he drew no benefit into his life personally. And I want to say, are we asleep under our open heaven? This time when the Holy Spirit is available to us, Jesus said this is a better time to be alive than when He actually walked this planet. You don't believe me? Let it read. Let me read it to you. This is the time of all times. Uh, He said, I am telling you the truth. It is better for you that I go away because if I do not go, the helper, there it is again, His favorite word for the Holy Spirit, the helper will not come to you. So are we asleep under our open heaven? Are we still dreaming that, wow, it'd be so wonderful to have the physical presence of Jesus still with us on the earth? And Jesus says, no, actually the time you're living in now is a better time because the Holy Spirit is now available uh, to you. The Apostle Paul, seeking to emphasize the same point to us, says, don't you know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you receive from God? God's Holy Spirit is no longer to be visited within the stone walls of a temple in Jerusalem. You and I, believers of Jesus Christ, are the New Testament tabernacle of God. We're the mobile presence of God on the earth. Wherever we are, He is. Wow, what a time to be alive. But the question is, are we accessing it? Are we asleep like Jacob was under this incredible moment and we're not accessing it due to the fact that we don't realize this time that we're alive. So on this Pentecost Sunday, let's wake up to the presence of God that is in us by His Spirit right now. Right now, let's begin to put our awareness on the Holy Spirit, filling the room that you're in right now, bubbling up within your life right now, wherever you are. What better way to celebrate Pentecost than to experience its reality right now. Jesus wants us to have a passion for Holy Spirit fullness. Listen to his words. He said, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from within him. And by this, he meant the spirit whom those who believe in him would later receive. Taken from John's gospel, John wants us to know without confusion about what Jesus was referring to in terms of drinking and rivers of water flowing. He puts it in there. He meant the Holy Spirit 
who those who believe in him would later receive. But I want to pull out that phrase that Jesus gave us there. He said, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. There is two parts to that invitation. There's the coming to Jesus and then there's the drinking. Drinking is Jesus' favorite metaphor that he draws upon to explain to us how to interact and get this living presence of God flowing up out of us. In another place, he says, if anyone drinks the living water I give them, they will never thirst again. For when you drink the water I give you, it becomes a gushing fountain of the Holy Spirit springing up and flooding up out of you to endless life. Why did Jesus like the metaphor of drinking so much? Why is that the metaphor, the illustration that he drew out of a, a natural occurrence? Uh, because it was something we could all relate to. As it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. We all understand drinking. We wouldn't be alive if we didn't know how to drink. And Jesus is drawing on that metaphor, that illustration, knowing we can all relate to it. But you know that drinking is not something that you do accidentally. It's something you do intentionally. It requires an opening, a surrender, a yieldedness a deliberate choice on your behalf to drink. And so it is with the Holy Spirit. He is freely given, but we must consciously receive Him. His Spirit needs to be recognized, honored, and drawn upon to become a living presence in us. And the instruction of Jesus was to come to Him and drink. Many people are still dry because they haven't completed the invitation. They think just being in the presence of God is enough. But by being in the presence of water, you don't satisfy your thirst. Just being in the presence is not enough. We need to drink. And just coming to church, just coming and being surrounded by worship and God's people isn't enough. He said, come to me and intentionally Open yourself in a yielded way and drink. That's what Jesus instructed. And I believe that so many of our struggles could be remedied if we restored to our life this, this principle of opening ourselves and drinking. Drinking is such a neglected aspect of an ongoing experience of the Holy Spirit bubbling up in our life as a living presence of God on the earth. Now, some of you watching might be thinking, well, I, I don't know how to do that. Well, you just transfer the same principle of drinking water to the principle of opening up to the Holy Spirit. It's the same thing. We open ourselves in a sense of yieldedness and the Holy Spirit begins to flow up out of us like the living fountain, just like Jesus said he would. There's no begging required to drinking, just a simple yieldedness that enables the Spirit of God to bubble up into our lives. And so you might be asking, well, what's gonna happen if I open myself to the Holy Spirit like that? Well, I can tell you that God is good and He wants to do you good. And I can declare over your life right now that something good is going to happen to you. And here's what I want you to do. Here's how I want you to respond to this message today. I want you to stand to your feet wherever you are. Put your stuff aside. Remove any distractions. We are about to encounter the Spirit of God. We're going to come to Jesus Christ and we're going to drink of the provision that He's made for us in the Holy Spirit. I want you to close your eyes right now. Shut out all distractions. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to lift uh, your, your hands up and palms out. I want you to adopt a position of receiving as if you're about to be given something because you are. I'm going to pray 
And then after my prayer, we're going to transition to a time of worship. I want you to keep your eyes shut. I want you to keep this posture of yieldedness and open. God is going to do something wonderful in your life today. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for your gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, we thank you for making this gift possible. Holy Spirit, we open to you right now. We thank you, God. Come, Holy Spirit, rise up and begin to move amongst us, we pray.